Well, we do wish you a Merry Christmas and are grateful that you decided to spend just a few minutes with all the things that we're going to do today on Christmas Day right here with us together. It's a really special day and one that is about more than just exchanging gifts and having good food and all the other things. This is the day we commemorate the birth of Jesus. So thank you for being here. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll have a few moments of worship together. I'll have a little devotional thought today, and then we'll get on with our celebration. Would you pray with me? God, we're grateful for this day, grateful, God, for what Jesus did for us, and we pause to remember that today really is your birthday the God who became human and made his dwelling among us. We celebrate that today, along with all the other family stuff that we'll do. Thankful for the privilege of knowing you. Uh, Bless our time together and help us to worship you today. In Jesus' name.
you sinners Come find his mercy Come to the table He will satisfy A taste of his goodness Find what you're looking for birthday. That's a phrase that every single one of us has heard and said and sang every year. People wish you on your special day a happy birthday. Why? Because the day that you were born was special. I mean, you don't remember it. I mean, when, when a married couple says to each other, happy anniversary, they're actually celebrating something that they participated in. I mean, they were actively involved in that unity forming moment that would later produce anniversary moments to commemorate the original wedding moment? Or at PCC, we celebrate the work anniversaries of our staff. Every year on the month that you joined our, our staff, we cheer for that active decision that you made back then that brought you to our team and the decision that you keep making to remain on it. Now, now this one's a little strange. I know it doesn't apply to everyone, but, but at least for me, Every March the 23rd, I pause to remember that same day back in 1993 when I purchased my first home. 
We signed the papers late in the afternoon, too late to actually move stuff. But I was so excited to have a place that we could call our own that we took our young daughter to that house straight from the lawyer's office and spent the night on the fresh, new carpeted floor. That memory was created by a deliberate decision that Susan and I made. Now, here's the point. The things that you and I celebrate every year are almost always the result of an event that we remember, but not birthdays. If you did remember it, you would want to forget it. I mean, let's spare each other the details, but I'm confident that birth was traumatic for all of us. We're better for our natal amnesia. But this birthday, the one we celebrate today, is one of a kind. This is not just another baby born to a normal mother in a normal way in a normal place. And this is not a baby with no memory of his birth. Jesus, whose birth we remember today, was God before he was human. It was God while he was human, was God after he was human. And and because of his divinity, Jesus is the only one who actually can recall his entry to humanity. We get this from the opening account of John's uh, words from the Bible. He said it like this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural descent or human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace, full of truth. So, The word, the logos is the Greek word, the word, the cosmic, all-powerful, all-knowing, always-present God came into a world that he made, became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. It's safe to say that the God who knows all things would know all things about his birth. Functionally a baby, but also functionally God too. A mystery, to be sure, but one we can bet our Christmas carols on. And here's my point. You and I sing to celebrate our birth every year because the day you breathed your first breath was a blessing to everyone around you. You were finally here after all those months or sometimes years of anticipation and praying and hoping you had arrived. For Jesus, our birthday celebration of his special day today is bittersweet. I mean, on the one hand, we win. Jesus' birth ushered in a new freedom for those of us who pursue God. We now have access to him. We can know him intimately. We can talk to him directly. No more priests or pastors or religious types deciding when to open the gate and to whom. Because of Jesus, we can talk with God, hear from God, be in relationship with God. But Jesus' birth, while a celebration for us, was a sacrifice for him the first of many he would make. Imagine, though, surrounded by all the trappings of heaven, with angels waiting on you and absolute safety and no lines, no traffic, no bills, no hard work, no war, no hatred, no mistreatment, no politics, no sin, no temptation, no arguments. That's what it was like for Jesus before he came. You and me, we spent nine months in a warm, comfortable womb that we don't remember. This is all we know. Jesus, though, knew something far better, far better. His birth is a celebration for us, a sacrifice for him, which leads us to this question. If he had all that, why would he want all this? If he had all that, why would he want all this? Simple. He didn't. He didn't want all this. He wanted all of us. He didn't come for the corruption or the chaos, the brutality or the bitterness, the hatred or the hostility. 
He didn't come to embrace our world's brokenness. He came to fix it with himself. His very presence in the world was, as John put it, a light in the darkness. No, a light that overcame the darkness. And that is why we celebrate his birth. No longer do we have to accept all that's wrong with our world. We just have to accept the one who came to make it right. So make this Christmas about more than presents and food and playing and traveling and naps and football. Yes, there's football today. All those things are good. They're just not enough. Add to all of the other things today a moment of pause, of celebration for the one whose birth we remember, one that was not for his benefit, but for ours, for yours, because we can't fix all that's wrong with the world. But today, we can know someone who can. His name is Jesus, and we pause to say to him today, happy birthday. for a king but he didn't come in glory the author of the oceans and the sun still he chose to be written in our story so we could feel our flesh and blood and we No crown upon his head, he came like us instead. Emmanuel, he meets you where you are, he holds your heavy heart. Our God is with us all. without a home help us as a baby so if we feel the loss in our own lives we are not alone he has felt the same Oh,